precaution. It is one of those topics which tends to blend with almost every other category in the programming world. Interviewers always ask questions based on recursion to gauge candidates' problem-solving abilities because this topic pushes the candidates' limit and differentiate them between good and exceptional. And on that note, I am Weber Khandelwal and I welcome you all to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. In this session, we will discuss some of the commonly used recursion problems asked in the interviews. We shall begin our session with our first question. We will be calculating sum of the numbers from 0 to a given number. Then we will discuss a recursive function that returns the factorial of a given number. After that, we will take a glance at a recursive function that returns the nth Fibonacci number. Post that, we will take a closer look at a recursive function that checks if the string is a palindrome. Finally, we will discuss recursive function that can reverse a given string. But before we begin, make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and clicked on the bell icon below, so you never miss an update from Simply Learn's YouTube channel. So without any further ado, let's get started with our first question. We will calculate the sum of numbers from 0 to a given number. We will start with creating a function sum. In function definition, we will first check if the given number is 0 or 1. Then we will return the number. Else, we will return addition of that number with the recursive sum function with n-1 as an argument. Now let's try it in the code editor. We will write a function int sum argument int num we will check if num is equals to 0 or num is equals to 1 if yes then we will return num else we will return num plus sum of n minus 1. Now we will write the code for the main block. We will declare int n comma press. We will call c in to take the input data then we will equals res equals to sum at n then we will print this sum press now let's try and execute this program we will give argument as 5 as you can see our function is working flawlessly let's get back to our slides now let's move on to our next question we will discuss a recursive function to find the factorial of given number. We will start with creating a function fact. In function definition, we will first check if the given number is less than or equal to 1. Then we will return 1 else. We will return multiplication of that number with a recursive fact function call with n-1 as an argument. Now let's try that in a code editor. We will start with function int fact. argument int n if n is less than equals to 1 then we will return 1 
else we will return and multiplied by recursive function that with n minus 1 as argument now let's write the code for the main block so we will declare variables int n comma res we will take input from the user now res is equals to fact n now we will try to print the value of res so fact Yes. Let's try and execute this. We will find the factorial of five which is 120. As you can see, our function is working flawlessly. It is getting us the value of factorial 5, which is 120. Let's get back to our slides. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Then we will move on to our next question. We will discuss a recursive function to find the nth Fibonacci number. We will start with creating a function Fibonacci. In this function's definition, we will first check if the given number is less than or equal to 1. Then we will return that number. Else, we will return the sum of recursive function Fibonacci with n-1 as an argument and recursive function Fibonacci with n-2 as an argument. Now, let's try to do that in the code editor. Let's start by creating a function int fibo with argument as int n. We will first check if n is less than equals to 1. If yes, then we will return n. Otherwise, we will return sum of recursive function FIVO at n minus 1 and the Fibonacci function at n minus 2. Let's write code for the main block. We will start with variable int n comma res we will call c in function to get user value for n then we will store the value of fibonacci function in res now we will call print function c out to print the value of res so nth Fibonacci number is equals to res. Return zero. Let's try and execute this. We will check the Fibonacci number at ninth position, which is thirty four. As you can see, we are getting the value as 34. That is, our function is working flawlessly. Let's get back to our slides. Now, we will move forward with our next question. We will be discussing a recursive function that can check if a string is palindrome or not. We will start with creating a boolean function in is palin with an argument as string str integer low and integer high. First, we will check if the string has at least one character or not. Then we will compare the first character and the last character. 
If a mismatch happens, then we will return false. Otherwise, we will move to our next pair by recalling the recursive function with incrementing low and decrementing high by 1. Now, let's try this in the code editor. We will start by creating a recursive function to check if str from low to high is a palindrome or not. Here, the low defines the first index and high defines the last index. So we will write a boolean function is palin with argument as string str comma int low comma int high we will check for star base case so if low is greater than equals to high then we will return Now we will check if the first character is equal to the last character return false. Now we will move to the next pair. So return is palin with argument as str comma low plus one comma high minus one. Now let's write the code for the main block. So, we will take string str is equals to uh, Malayalam Now we will check if alien repeat Now we will find the length of this string so int ln is equals to str dot length now we will check if is palin From str comma zero to comma ln minus one. If it is true, then it will give c out. We will print palindrome. Palindrome. Else, we will print not a palindrome. Let's try and execute this in the code editor. As you can see, it is saying that it is a palindrome, which is correct. So our function is working flawlessly. Let's get back to our slides. Finally, we will discuss a recursive function that can reverse a given string. We will start by with creating a function reverse with an argument as string str integer low and integer high. First, we will check if the string is greater than one character or not. If yes, then we will swap them. 
Then we will move to our next pair by calling the recursive function reverse with incrementing low and decrementing high by 1. Now let's try this code in the code editor. We will start with creating a recursive function but before that we will include a special library. Include algorithm now void reverse string and person str note that we have passed the string as a reference parameter int low int high now we will check if low is less than high if yes then we will swap str at low comma str at high then we will call the recursive function reverse to move to our next pair str comma low plus one comma high minus one let's write code for the main block we will write string str which is equals to simply learn now we will reverse str comma zero comma str dot length minus one now see out reverse of the string str which is equals to str let's try and execute this as you can see this function is working flawlessly as it has reversed the word simply learn Let's get back to our slides. And this was all for today's session. Hope you guys found it informative and helpful. If you like this session, then like, share and subscribe. If you have any questions, then you can drop them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.